Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm going to continue the mission of the DRK-2. In the previous episode we brought Jeb Kerman to the surface of Minmus to fill the contract of planning a flag here and now we are going to proceed back to Kerbin orbit in order to refuel and then go ahead with the Gilly mission which this lander should also be able to do. So we're going to plan a flag on Gilly. After that, the plan is probably to bring uh, Jeb back so that he can get, gain the experience. He has to actually return back to Kerbin before he does that. So, so that would be the current plan. But we'll have to see. First of all, we need to rendezvous with the DRK-2, which is not in a, a equatorial orbit around Minmus, of course. Um, this looks approximately 130 degrees. If this is 90, that's about 130, which means, well, we've got a little marker there, but that's that's on the opposite side. We should be heading to the opposite marker, but then we also have to correct a little bit. Um, launch azimuth is a little bit different. Uh, we should we should correct a little bit south, right? Okay, well, uh, let's just get on with it, and then we will, I mean, we've got enough fuel that we can correct inclination anyway, even if we get the launch azimuth wrong. So I'm not going to do the math right here. Okay, that's where it is. Well, about 135 should be fine. Let's see where we're at. Uh-oh, wrong way around. Ascending node 173. Okay, so it's going around the opposite direction. That's not helpful. Okay, but that means we go this way. <laughs> okay, uh, hmm. Yeah, I think we can do that. Uh, point up, though. That might be helpful. Silly me putting it in the opposite orbit. But here we go. Drastic turnaround. Okay, now we're going in the right direction. Let's see about the ink. Yeah, 14 degrees off. Well, considering the quick change, I guess that's expected. Let's see this way. One point eight. That might be as good as we can get. We're a little bit off in general. Okay, so let's get into the inside track. So I'm going to circularize at 30 here. Okay, that's uh, close enough. What we'll have to do is over here burn to match and then we'll actually get the encounter on this side. So that'll be alright. We could have done a little second hop and done a different biome of Minmus, but we'll leave that for a different mission. We don't have a contract for that right now anyway. Okay, point two. It takes two burns, but they're tiny burns, so no big deal. Just need to boost up a little bit more, and we'll correct the inclination here as well. Okay, here we go, within 500 meters. Getting ready to match velocities with the target. Not much to do, it's just 2.1. Okay, velocities matched. We will do a tiny little burn to move towards it. And let's see about the orientation of the DRK. No point controlling from the from the docking port. It's actually oriented the same way, and it's a little bit trickier for the for the explorer pod. It's gotta have to. Oh right, no operational SAS modules. That's even worse. Okay, do you look stable right now? I think you do. Okay, so we'll have the lander come on this side like this and then slip in. 
Ah, uh, that's not good though. Sun's on the opposite side. We should roll towards the sun, and then it can slip in in the opposite direction. Now, um, hmm, right. There we go. That one. Oop. Uh, back away a bit. Oh, oh. Our orientation is... Ah, I'm making a hash of this. Okay, uh, forward. I don't usually use chase view for this. Okay, we've got docking port magnetism and we're on. All right, without breaking anything. That's good enough for me. All right, so let's see now. We want crew hatch transfer to the cockpit. We'll leave the hatch, that hatch open, but we can close this one. Turn lights off. And SAS on now that Jeb's back. Okay, transferring back to Kerbin for now. Hmm, with our heavy inclination, it might be a good idea to keep it loose for a sec. And then we'll adjust the inclination over here. And also fix our whole situation. How much would that cost? Yeah, about 200. Okay, um... Yeah, it's probably better to fix the inclination from out there. It's tough to see what's going to happen with our orbit like this. We could fix the inclination here. It probably costs less than 200 to fix the inclination here. So maybe we should just get into a zero inclination. Well, let's go with this for now, and then we'll adjust once we're in interplanetary space. Have to do it here, since uh, we're combining the inclination change. So yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is, even if Jeb doesn't have them activated, he should at least have the display here. That's what I'm wondering about. I forget, I mean, maybe it doesn't display unless you've got some experience points, but that seems weird. Probably not intending to arrow break. Not that it wouldn't be safe to do so, but this, that might be a little bit unpredictable. And we've got we've got fuel. We'll need to refuel before trans well, actually we might make a Eve transfer with what we've got, but it wouldn't be safe to do so and we wouldn't have enough to get back. I mean obviously Jeb at least has stability assist. So it really should show that here. Oh darn! No, that that's going into the dark, and we're gonna eventually lose electric charge. Let's let's turn to the maneuver node once we get there. Point one inclination, current periapsis, two forty-one.
by the way the ascending and descending node are jittering about it's probably not entirely sure about that point one but let me bring the curve and periapsis down oh uh, intersect separation 60 odd kilometers could we get that a little bit closer let's see uh, from here it's probably RCS no no this it's too hard to even see what's going on here uh, let me get rid of the RCS it's too much oh boy we've got a we've got a likely situation here but can we burn the relative velocity between us and it in time uh, well we've got really high thrust engines so we've got that going for us so it's not a matter of time it's a matter of delta V probably talking about more than the, maybe maybe a thousand close to a thousand can we adjust it a little more from here or 5.7 out okay about 1.5 all right so uh, got a good way of approaching the station and let's continue we'll probably be doing docking activities on the daylight side of Kerbin we can see how quickly things change here we're 1.5 away here we're rate 281 so we've got to do this pretty quickly and efficiently our periapsis is 67 here. That's not dangerous, but if we if we do the target matching burn, it should be fine. Okay, we're a minute away. Let's see where is the. Yep, that's the one I want. Wow, it's more than a thousand. It's some of it's bleeding off, but. Okay, two of the engines are out. Okay, it looks like it'll be 7.4 kilometers away. And we are currently moving towards the station. We might need to add a mod propellant. Uh, storage facility to a station. I think we were lacking one of those. Okay, at this point I want to not crew hatch. There we go. Toggle, control from here. Well, it's changed my nav ball, so it is controlling from there, but last time we had a little bit of trouble lining up with the station. So I'm wondering if that's gonna happen. Make sure the station is alright with us. We are on this side. Lights are on. We're probably coming on the right side. I'm just gonna leave it uh, oriented like this. I need more practice docking properly. And I think we were all right anyway. Let's get our lights on. So, I mean, I don't know. We'll see whether I can fix the problem with Jeb not having those controls by bringing him down. I think maybe We'll lay off of the Gilly mission until we check out whether we can make sure Jeb is all nice and proper. So I'll, uh, what we need to do is we need to set up an RCS module here and we need to send up a transfer vessel to bring Jeb down quickly so that he can get his experience and maybe Bill and Bob as well. Bob is still in here somewhere, right? Yeah, there he is. Since I know the nav ball was not uh, honest last time, I'm not gonna even pay attention to it. I'm just gonna dock, dock uh, by sight. I remember it was only very close to the docking port where the discrepancy was very obvious. But maybe there won't be any discrepancy this time. Let's see. We're not quite ruled to match the station, but I think I'll accept that for this time. Uh, no, I think we're, we're off now.
Yeah, there is a discrepancy between where the dock board actually is and where it thinks it is. And that's something to do with this craft, I think. Let's slow down a bit. That should do it. CS off. SAS off. And we are docked. Okay, all good. This time the station solar arrays are not blocked by the DRK. And the downside is that there's not enough fuel here to refuel the DRK. So we've also got a fuel module to send up. So yeah lots of stuff we've got RCS we've got fuel and we've got a crew transfer pod to send to the station alright so I'm going to try and handle that in the VAB okay so I've got the RCS module bit done and I've also patched up the fuel transfer vehicle the refueler that launches on the extremely large what is it called again station refueler Taurus. I call it Taurus. It's not a Taurus B. And that uh, includes some input from viewers. Uh, you'll actually see some of those tips being implemented here. Uh, putting the probodobodyne on the side instead of in line. Uh, it was one of the tips to keep that thing stable, but I'll show you that once we get to it. One thing I haven't uh, built yet is the crew transfer vehicle, and that's because I was thinking of making it a space plane, uh, a very small one, instead of the large uh, DRK using a small space plane in order to transfer just from the ground to low carbon orbit just crew just crew transfers uh, I decided that it wouldn't be really good to use this command pod because we wouldn't be able to bring all three back down and still have this manned. we'd have to have uh, unmanned uh, one of the probe cores on it in order to bring it up otherwise we wouldn't be able to do a three person crew rotation otherwise we need some way of carrying four uh, so that we can have one pilot as well. So that's an uh, issue. Uh, another problem is that the docking port arrangement on the station is a little bit inconvenient. Uh, the, there is really only one port that's uh, sort of pointed enough to accommodate a, um, a real shuttle. The, uh, if you want to use uh, which one? Uh, this, uh, this Clampatron. If you're not going to use this Clampatron, then you can access one of the side side the um, docking ports, but otherwise it's a little bit tough. Um, anyway, I'll show that to you once we get there. So I haven't built the crew transfer vehicle yet, and it'll, it might take some time given that I want to try to use a shuttle for it. Anyway, we're launching this with the OVX. It, for some reason, the OVX's struts were not engaged. They weren't connected, so I had to redo this quite a bit. So we'll see how it works. I hope I've done that right. Anyway, it should be able to de deliver this to orbit and then uh, return safely. And that is the plan. Alright, so yeah, let's go. Actually, hold on a sec. I recovered vessel because I remembered solar panels are necessary. And uh, th uh, it helped that it was night outside. And I would be wanting to time warp to get to daylight. So solar panels and probably some always open solar panels just for good measure. Alright, better. Ah, right, we don't have those yet. Okay, now we can save, make sure the struts are still... Oh, look, random disconnection of this strut. Don't know how that happens. Okay. Okay, like I said, I, I think I want to time warp a little bit. Hopefully this thing will remain stable on the launch pad during this. Okay, so this isn't really the the launch I'm nervous about. It's the Taurus beat I'm worried about with the huge refueler. But here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and go. So yeah, I've got a detachable nose cone. The docking port is actually one of the docking port seniors because this is a permanent module of the station. It also has a docking port at the bottom because you don't want to limit our expansion possibilities. It does not have any uh, actual engines, 
it is it has to use RCS to reach the station. So it's going to be a little bit tedious to do the maneuvers to meet up with the station. So hopefully not too bad. Just a reminder, the OBX is actually built around a 1.25 meter center and that has uh, LVT45 there and that was necessary to lift the payloads that I wanted. The LVT45 will run out before the outer engines. Huh. It's not drawing fuel the way I... Uh, the fuel line got cut. I had the fuel lines on, at the, but the fuel lines just got cut. That's going to be a problem. So it's not feeding from these. Well, better to start that... I don't know. Uh, how does this... I, I've never tried this multiple selection thing before. Probably not a good day to start that. Okay, a little bit unbalanced there. A little bit unbalanced there. Restoring some balance there. Now we should be all nice and kosher with respect to those four tanks. Let me start tilting a little bit because we started deviating. Oh, this uh, makes a bigger difference than I would have thought. Just this field transfer. Wow, 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 oh, wow, there's a lot of torque. It just This is just, just one tank off right now. It's quite amazing. Well, now it should be balanced. Yeah, feels a lot better. One tank off. Okay, center engine out. Not very efficient right now. We'll probably have to do some fuel transfers before we reach Apoapsis. So while we're coasting to Apoapsis, I'll do the rest. Okay, it thinks it's run out of fuel. I'm gonna shut down for a sec while I transfer this stuff. Okay, we should be able to go. Okay, going to 100 kilometers and we'll circularize there. We have an inclination. I will want to correct that because we want to bring this back down to the KSC. This isn't the right place to correct it though. Well, this is, that isn't. Maybe, let's call, well, that's very iffy. I'd rather uh, correct it with the payload separated and the payload doing its own corrections. Alright, so, carbon apoapsis. Okay, that's about 100 on average. Let me shut down the center engine because I don't like it making that sound. Okay. So that's good. Let's get solar panels out on the mission. Oh, right, because we don't have action groups, so I have to do it this way. Okay, I think we're good to go. Oh, uh, let's uh, eject the nose cone first. Right. Now let's decouple this. Right. Okay, we have control just fine. Good. And yeah, that's that's fine. Let's focus on bringing the OVX back. It's the most expensive component here. Correct in inclination here. Okay, that should be as good as we get. Okay, we're go for retro burn. That should do the trick. 
Okay, home continent in sight. Probably too high. I generally aim to be too high so that I can adjust that here. And yeah, clearly too high. Okay. Okay, parachutes. Uh, going over. Just a little bit too much. Anyway, this one should be safe in the water. We'll see. Okay, 7.9 meters per second. As expected, uh, some thrust will be necessary to slow us down to a decent speed. Okay, looks nice and safe. Not even SAS on. I can engage that, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so recovery of that 96,000 funds, 7.4 kilometers away from the KSC. On to the docking of the RCS module. So, wait a minute, the probe core doesn't seem to have the... show that, I mean, obviously this has stability assist, but it doesn't show the little stuff here. I'm gonna have to take a closer look at things. Okay, we now have a uh, intersect point at 0.7 kilometers, 19.4 meters per second, not bad. Considering we're gonna have a long burn time. Okay, so here we go. Hmm, the thrusters are blowing right at the soap panels. It won't do any damage, of course, but uh, still not the smartest design. Obviously, should have put them here instead. No, no, then the, this thing will get in the way. Just a little bit offset then. Oh no, it's giving me two alternate realities. I don't need that. I just need the favorable one. Okay, well, I'm gonna trust the favorable one anyway. But we are actually closing much closer than it thinks we are. I don't know what's up with the encounter system. We're, we're, we're closer than 18 and this marker is nowhere near indicating 18.6 kilometers anyway, so weird. Alright, we are in render distance and RCS on and let's get rid of our relative velocity with respect to the station. I'm gonna chase the prograde marker to the target. There we go. Now this has to be docked properly. We can't. Uh, we have to make sure our rotation is correct, and probably that this probodobodyne is in line with the station. So maybe something more like this would be in order. The orientation of the TRK is sort of messing me up here. Okay, getting within 10 meters, slowing down. This module itself is in the dark. Gotta turn its lights off now. I think it's all right. Yep, no worries. All right, so RCS module is on. Next thing we need to do is the fuel transfer, but uh, I've already done three dockings in this episode. Uh, first the uh, little lander to the DRK, then the DRK to the station, and now the RCS module to the station. I think maybe I've I've done enough docking for one episode. So. 
Uh, next time, the big thing is, uh, so this is a little bit of a lackluster episode, but the next time we're going to have the big launch of the Taurus B and see if it works. Remember, that's recoverable. And it's supposed to launch about 47 tons uh, to, uh, to orbit. So that's a pretty big launch. And then after that, uh, once we've launched that, uh, we have to take a look at the space plane. So I'll, I'll take some time to design uh, a crew transfer space plane instead of this huge cargo transfer plane, even though this does have a crew module. But uh, yeah, just a crew transfer space plane in order to get uh, Jeb, Bill, and Bob back, though. I think that's going to require extensive testing. It might be that uh, Jeb, Bill, and Bob are going to be hanging out around Kerbin uh, for a lot longer than I thought they would be. I thought they'd be headed straight for Gilly, but I think maybe that might not be the best idea. All right, and uh, it it maybe bringing Jeb back is not going to help us get the little indicators over here. I'm I'm gonna have to look into that. Uh, so next time after I launch Taurus B, which has the fuel for this, uh, we'll get this refueled, and then I'll decide maybe we should transfer to Gilly first instead of bringing Jeb back home. And then we'll just take care of that mission and uh, fulfill the contract so we have funds. Uh, well, right now it's not telling us our funds, but uh, we do need funds because we've done, we're have done. we going to be doing other launches. Taurus B, if we lose that, that could be a huge blow and we'll need to recoup those funds. So yeah, lots of plans and I'll think about that. But yeah, uh, that'll do it for me this time. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.